measure all the bones and rather than draw, doing a scale drawing on graph paper where you've measured everything and essentially drawn it in, um, reproducing it in a smaller thing, we'll just take a full piece of acetate and we'll draw it on the acetate. So you do a huge map. So it's one to one scale. Uh, you can put your notes there, your comments. Um, and so you have an actual tracing of the fossil. So it's, it's a tracing. It's not, you know, your necessarily an interpretation of you know, drawing it. So in order to get the specimen out, to get the information out, you're going to destroy the site. So the, all the things that came together to create this was a unique event. It can't be reproduced in a, in a lab, uh, and if you can control as much of the information, get as much of the information from the specimen you can, so not just the specimen itself, but how it was deposited, uh, the position of the body, you can document all of that, then of course it, it helps your science and it helps you interpret what happened. So, yeah. You want to preserve the body, the crime scene, exactly as it lay in the Cretaceous stream just before we buried the sand because someone has messed with the body. It's abundant evidence somebody went into the torso, twisted the vertebra around, pulled out some ribs, flipped over other ribs. So the mapping we're doing is preserve all of that information. Compared to the early Permian. So if you have a very accurate map and you take everything out very carefully in blocks, it's very easy to know where it goes. Whereas if you just shovel everything into, and you see this happen with a lot of people that will find a fossil uh, in their uh, yard or in their uh, property or it just shoveled it into a box. Well, the things break up and for instance with our Dimetrodon spines, if you find one intact, that's wonderful. You know um, how, to, how to put that together and how to do that. But when it's broken up and it may be in three or four hundred pieces and the pieces didn't fit together perfectly to start out with, then you've got nearly an impossible task. And that's also when knowing the anatomy of animals and of the particular dinosaur animals is very important because you can recognize oftentimes fragmentary bones for what they are. So you can tell you know, exactly where in the skeleton that went. You want to record the position of each bone as they lay in the sediment because that's a clue to who and what chewed on it, messed with it, jumbled it, pushed it, pulled it.